from the original Wednesday being in the show to a language that was entirely made up. Here are some things you probably didn't know about Netflix's Wednesday, starting with the real Wednesday being right there the whole time. People from my generation probably know Wednesday as Jenna Ortega, but she isn't the one who started it all. Christina Ricci portrayed the iconic Wednesday Adams in the 1991 film The Adams Family when she was just 10 years old. And now she's passing the torch of Wednesday Adams to Jenna Ortega. In fact, Ricci is best known for playing the morbid daughter of the Adams family, but it seems like she was more than happy to give up her old role and pass the part on to Ortega. In Ricci's new role as Miss Thornhill in Netflix's The Adams Family, she is one of the few characters who actually feel normal. Well, at least that's what we all thought at first. Anyways, the fact that she's shown as a normal person is a huge contrast to her past role as Wednesday Adams. In the new series, Ortega takes on the role of Wednesday and brings her own spin to it. Now, Wednesday is no longer just a part of the Adams Family ensemble. She's the star of her own story branch. Her look has been modernized a bit, but still has classic Wednesday vibes with the pigtails and dark humor. But this new version of Wednesday is actually much more complex than the one we've seen before, and we get to see an emotional side to her character. The show's creators took a big risk by making some of these changes to Wednesday, and it paid off. The series has been met with an overwhelmingly positive response, and it even broke records by becoming the most watched show on Netflix during its first week. So let's just say the series is a fan favorite. Speaking of fan favorites, did you know Thing is real? Thing is literally just a hand, right? I knew it. Hello, Thing. But despite this, he won everyone's hearts worldwide. Everyone loved him, even though we knew he was just CGI. Or was he? Well, turns out the hand isn't CGI. Well, at least most of it isn't. Victor Dorabantu was the man who brought Tim Burton's vision of Thing to life. Instead of relying on computer-generated imagery, Wednesday chose a real actor to bring the performance to life, and Dorabantu was up for the challenge. Plus, he's also a magician, so he already knew a thing or two about sleight of hand. Obviously, to make Thing look as close to Burton's vision of a Frankenstein-type character, Dora Bantu had to be dressed in an all-blue suit and get into some pretty uncomfortable positions around furniture. The makeup artists also worked their magic by adding stitches and other marks to give the character its iconic look. The editors then used their expertise to make sure Dora Bantu's body was hidden, creating a seamless skin to cover the top of his wrist. But even with all that work and equipment, it was ultimately up to Victor Dorabantu himself to bring life and emotion into Thing through his hands. And he did just that. Speaking of Thing, did you know the language he spoke is completely made up? Since Thing was just a hand, he couldn't just talk to people the normal way. He needed a different method of communication. So he decided to just make one up all by himself. At first, when Thing was introduced to the show, many people people assumed he was communicating with sign language, but this wasn't the case. The creative team behind the scenes actually made a unique and original way for Thing to communicate that everyone could understand. According to Ortega, the creative team would make Dora Bantu move his hands in random movements until they found something that looked right, and they did this like every single day. While Thing had his own way with words, it was Wednesday's lines that were in danger. Netflix wanted to get rid of some of her best lines. Everyone knows Wednesday Adams for her dark and morbid sense of humor. But did you know that Netflix almost got rid of it? When show creators Miles Millar and Alfred Goh were talking to Netflix execs about the series, some of them weren't so keen on Wednesday's lines like, I do like stabbing. The social part, not so much. But Millar and Goh were adamant about keeping Wednesday Adams' trademark dark humor intact in the series. After all, her wits are what makes the character so iconic. In the end, they were able to win over the execs and keep her lines in the show. Her comedic style is something that we've all seen in every version of Wednesday Addams from the original series to the movies, even the animation, and now this Netflix show. Without it, she would basically be unrecognizable as Wednesday. Another iconic thing that will forever be attributed to her is the Wednesday dance.
You see, the song in the dancing scene had a lot of hidden details. The song that featured in the iconic dance scene of the Addams Family wasn't Lady Gaga's hit single Bloody Mary, but a completely different song called Goo Goo Muck. The whole thing is just one big Mandela effect on everyone, who seems to have fallen victim too, but a lot of people wish they actually did use Lady Gaga's song instead saying it would have fit better with Wednesday's character. But that couldn't be any further from the truth. Goo Goo Muck is about dealing with teenage life as a monster, one that's misunderstood by the so-called normies in the world. It talks about tigers, night headhunters, and beasts roaming through the night, enough to allude to the narrator being some kind of werewolf or other creature of the dark. If you ask me, the song perfectly summarizes what Wednesday season one is all about, a school for supernatural outcasts, who were feared by those around them, with Tyler taking on the role of a literal teenage monster who terrorizes both normies and outcasts in Jericho at night. Since I'm already on the topic of the dance scene, one thing you probably didn't know about the show is that Jenna Ortega choreographed the dance all by herself. The dance scene in Wednesday's episode was arguably the most iconic part of the entire show. It had become so popular that even if you hadn't seen any episodes, you'd probably be familiar with it because of how popular it got on social media. What surprised people the most about this scene was that it was choreographed by Ortega herself. She went the extra mile to make sure the dance was as authentic as possible, drawing from influences such as 80s goth clubs and past Adams Family movies. Despite having only gotten the song by the cramps a week before filming, Ortega put her all into making it perfect. She also had to deal with another obstacle, the fact that she was unknowingly dealing with COVID during this time, but Ortega still managed to pull off the dance perfectly. It's clear Ortega was extremely committed to her character, so much so that she decided to learn the cello just for the role. Ortega was willing to learn the cello just for a few scenes that were included in the show. Typically, it takes years of practice and patience to learn how to become skilled at playing this instrument, but Ortega was determined to succeed, so she practiced hard and managed to learn how to play it within two months. Now that's what you call method acting. Although her playing wasn't perfect, it was good enough for the scenes in which she had to use it. To give her fans a little glimpse of her training, Ortega shared some clips and photos on her Twitter account. It was clear that she had put a huge amount of effort into this role and was dedicated to making it as realistic as possible. And those were all the things you probably didn't know about Netflix's Wednesday. My very first stalker. Maybe this forced vacation will be more interesting than I imagined.